Hello, Year 7. Welcome back to another week of lockdown. Hopefully, you'll be back next week to do some sculpting. But until then, we're going to just push through with more theory and a little bit of prac. So when you come back, all we'll do is prac. So what we're going to do today is look at traditional totems um, in Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander and Northwest American Indian cultures. So you need to write that down as the title in your book or type it up on a Word document. Again, if you don't have a printer, just keep it on your computer. You can print it out and put it in your book another time. Um, same if you don't have your book, just write it on a bit of paper. You'll stick it in when you get back. Okay, so what is a totem? A totem, what we've already discussed, is a natural object or animal that is believed to have a particular um, spiritual significance to a society and it's adopted as a sort of emblem. So we talked about loosely um, animals being um, symbols for sporting teams, um, but it's more of a basis in um, different cultures as different animals having particular traits that those people then embody. So you need to pause the slide and write these notes in your book, but I'm just going to go through them now. So in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture, totems are seen to connect people um, on a spiritual level between the lands, um, their, their identity and their dreaming. Um, it's important to note that totems are something that's um, dependent on the region or clan or mob. It's not just something that every, every Aboriginal person or Torres Strait Islander person has. It depends on a variety of contexts, so we're not being generalistic here and saying, you know, all Aboriginal people have totems, because that's not the case. So in Indigenous culture, a totem is a natural object, plant or animal that is inherited by um, their family or their mob as, a, as an emblem. It um, means that that person has caretaking responsibilities for that animal. So say if a person has the totem of a goanna, um, it means they've got to maintain the survivability of that animal and they're not allowed to eat it or kill that said animal. Um, the animal also, or the totem, defines the person's role um, in, their, um, in their clan or their tribe and it also establishes their role in creation or dreaming stories. So depending on where a person is from will depend on their totem. They can also have more than one and they're generally appointed by the elders during a coming of age ceremony. So you might have a main totem and two subtotems or you might have um, more than one. So regardless of having those many totems means you protect that animal and you make sure that um, you are ensuring its survivability. Okay, next slide. So, I want you to look at this work and pause the slide and write these questions in your book or on your sheet of paper or whatever. And I want you to list the animals you can see in that work and describe what's happening. What's happening in this, this artwork? And then lastly, why is it important that it's painted on tree bark? What does that mean? So if you're looking at the artwork, it's a, um, depicting the tree of life and the artist's totems. So. I want you to think about how is that all interconnected. So you need to answer those questions in your book and we'll discuss it in a minute. Okay, so you can see the animals being there's an emu, there's a kangaroo, there's a snake, there's some birds, you've got a little sort of joey down here. So we can assume, and there's a goanna there. So they're all sort of, some of them are a little bit sneakily hidden. So you can assume that this um, artist's totems are the emu, the kangaroo, the goanna and the snake and possibly these little birds. So um, what I think is happening in this artwork is you've got the tree of life and you've got these animals here and it looks like they're all sort of feeding or they're trying to get to the tree to have food. So you've got the humans here collecting the food, you've got these animals here reaching up to, to reach for the food um, and there's all this sort of um, like foliage on the ground that these animals here are eating. So it's sort of saying that, you know, the tree is, and also the tree may be a totem too. So that tree is important in this ecosystem that the artist lives in. So why is it important that he's painted on tree bark? 
hmm, what could it mean? Maybe it's being symbolic that it's painted on the bark of the tree that maybe um, is providing life for this ecosystem and these animals. So it's important in the choice of, of medium. Also, um, it's important to note that totems in Indigenous culture, I'm going to cover this in a minute, they're not just done, um, they're generally not done on poles. They're actually painted on bark or on stone walls or rocks um, was the main way of, of, of creating art in this time. It wasn't creating poles. That's more of a North American thing that we'll look at in a minute too. So, oh, it's a bit of a blurry picture, but you can see a bit closely there's those animals there. So, you don't have to write this down, but as I was just saying, while there are some poles in Indigenous Australia culture, most of them are not like it's it's not like common commonplace. Um, poles are generally seen as memorial poles, which are used to um, signify a deceased person. So similar to gravestones in our culture, Indigenous people would create mm -hmm. like grave poles, which would signify somebody's um, spirit or where the deceased person's remains lay. So you need to pause the slide now and write down these notes. So now we're going to briefly look at Northwest American Indian culture. So totem poles are not created, again, not being generalistic, they're not just created by Native American Indians. It's generally a limited um, group of Northwest tribes. So these people erected um, totems in front of their homes and it generally means, um, it, well, it's in a, it signifies social rank and um, power within the community. So if you are a rich um, or, you know, powerful um, clan leader or chief, you would generally have a totem pole out the front of your home. So these would be carved as either humans, animals or other sort of um, mythological creatures in their culture. So you don't have to write this down. I'm just going to read it to you. So they were made to fill a variety of needs, but their general purpose was to commemorate people or special events or um, to signify that sort of that power in the community. So they were a display of wealth, status and power. They were expensive in creating. So you have to imagine um, the time and effort and the manpower that was needed to, and the artistry that was needed to carve these sorts of poles and then also painting them in quite um, vibrant colours. So generally it was found out the front of a, a chief's house um, to signify that he was the, the head of the, the community. So you need to write this down. Sorry there's a bit of writing today, but, you know, we're getting there. So pictography, which is a word that means um, creating things using pictures and symbols. So these poles have unique features and colours depending on the tribe or clan. Um, the interpretation requires knowledge of the customs and traditions of that clan or family. So specific colours are used and those colours have meanings behind them. So, so for example, red could mean, um, I don't know, passion or, or green could mean connection with the land. Um, so the colours were actually important. It wasn't just, oh, look at the pretty colours. It was they had different meanings. Same, same thing with the pictures of the animals or the... Um, the faces of people or the mythological creatures, those specific um, images had meanings within that, that clan. So like that, that eagle face there um, could have a particular meaning. It might be seen as the, um, the warrior animal. So it's being, I'm just making it up there, but um, seen as an important symbol. So that's why it's put on the clan leader's pole. So yeah. Symbols and images and pictures and colours are all important. It's not just things put together randomly. So, your practical task now. I want you in your book to draw a totem pole that represents you. So, you can choose three animals that you like or that are significant to you or that you think you have similar features to. Um, and I want you to put the, the most significant one on the bottom, the second choice in the middle and the third on the top. Um, there's a sheet here on totem animal meanings in Native American culture. I'll also put that on the class page on the hub that you can have a look at. Um, so you might find yourself 
being, for example, if you look at the horse, it um, represents stamina, mobility, and strength. You might feel that they they are things that um, that are similar to you, so you're going to put that in your totem drawing somehow. So I want you also to color the, draw it and color it in your book, and then I want you to write why each you chose each animal and why you chose certain colors. So, for example, if I was going to do it, I might choose the rabbit, the fox, and the crane because I'm independent, I'm resourceful, and I am cunning. I like to think so anyway. So, this is an example of a student's um, work from last year. So, they went a frog, a bear, and an eagle, and they chose specific colors like blue because they... Um, you know, they, they were a good swimmer, they liked water. The bear, if you look there, um, they had power and agility and the eagle was, where is it? Um, the eagle was um, a, a strong spirit. So that's an example there. Um, that's what the work for this lesson and I will speak to you all very soon. Zoom soon. <laughs>